you so much for coming on. Hello, thank you very much for having me. How are you doing? You look gorgeous. Thank you. So do you. Yeah, I was waiting on that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been? I've been good. I've been tired. I had a gig last night and then been up filming today, but I'm feeling very energised um, and I'm very excited to be here. So thank you very much for having me. No, of course. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, so there's lots of things that I wanted to chat to you about as well. First of all, um, I always just go in and have a wee chat, like, you know, what you've been up to, how things are going for you. I see that you've been doing loads of stuff. Obviously, you're doing your secret filming at the moment as well. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that or no? Yeah, well, basically, we well, yeah, I mean, I can really see whatever I want, to be honest. What are they going to do? Stop filming? No. Uh, well, they might. <laughs> um, so I've been currently had a camera crew filming me for the past few weeks just uh, about what I'm doing, how I'm organising events and, like, the struggles with being an under eighteen queen in drag, and just 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 the usual rubbish on what I get to the what I get to the, up to on my day to day life. Um, and it's been quite fun. it's been it's been quite weird. Um, on the days where I've not had the camera crew filming me because they'd be coming in my house, and then I'd be like no used way. to having it's like Big Brother to be honest. Like with Paul, <laughs> I'd, I'd be like having the camera like hidden. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite fun. I'm excited. So I am still living at home. Yeah. Okay, so are they like filming your family in that as well, or just you? Yeah, yeah. It's been my dad's been loving it. I mean, I think he's uh, loving it more than it is that I am. Like, um, my camera's all uh, my camera. My family are all like, um, very much good in front of the camera. So it's, it's been quite fun. It's been it's been quite entertaining. So I'm excited to the end result. It's gonna be chaos. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. I'm really excited to see it. Um, and as you know, so the main sort of thing that we talk about on every episode, we also talk about like I always like to look at an aspect of mental health with people. Yeah. That was kind of the main overall of the podcast. Um, so we always talk about like different aspects of different things in regards to mental health. And obviously, we've had some chats over the last few weeks and we were wanting to discuss like you know the difficulties that you've had getting into drag as well um so yeah tell me about that like if you don't mind me asking how old actually are you I'm 17 you're 17 right okay mental I thought I thought you were now like 19 or 20 or something but you are still yeah, I'm, ready. <sighs> but I'm ready to be out I'm, I'm ready to be free Oh, wait until you're even 18 now. It'll make a difference. Even like at the events, you can have a drink and just all this stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't actually drink. Like, I've never oh, been okay. Yeah, I don't drink. So that's not the issue for me. It's just performing. Like, there's so many, so many clubs that I wanted to boot me, but I'm like, well, I can't get in because you're licensed. So it's, it's really hey, okay. Yeah. Oh, God. I've never even thought about that. You can't actually that's, go into the club. That's the really hard part about doing drag. So I've got to try and do events in spaces that aren't in clubs because I can't get in. So are you been having to do like what have you what kind of stuff you've been having to do like lunches and lunches? Yeah, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of drag brunches um this year and last year. Um, I mean, I think I quite enjoy drag brunches more than normal shows at night because yeah. I, mean, I get up do do my thing and then I have the whole rest of my day after the brunch. So I quite enjoy it to be honest. They're a very uh, popular thing, drag brunches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not realize you need to come to one. I didn't realize how popular they were until. Oh, the hen nights do it. And I'm like, why would you want to come here for your hen? Like, fuck that. <laughs> but, I mean, um, but yeah, there's so much fun. Um, and yeah, it's just a good laugh. I mean, I don't understand how many people get that drunk at that time in the morning. But It's crazy, eh? Live, I've laugh, seen some laugh. videos of them and they just look, they look mad. Like, I know that Revolution in Glasgow does them because I hosted yeah. like an event there last month and then they do a lot of those. They look really fun. But anyway, how long have you been, how long have you been doing drag or like how did you get into it how did it all come about so I started when I was 14 um okay crazy it's been like I just hit my three-year anniversary for drag which is okay. insane um so I've been doing it for a few years I found drag from like being in Lanzarote with my family and then we went to a show bar and I was like I want to do that I want to do drag and like I just love the the way they change the outfits and stuff really quickly and like just the whole uh, performing aspect um, and then obviously the looks just had to come with it. Do you know what I mean? So, of course. But um, but yeah, so that's how I got into drag. And then obviously watching Drag Race just gave me that push to be like, mm -hmm. let's do, let's do that. So let's do it. Well, that's so funny you say that. Because when I said, I said to my husband, I was like, she's like filming something at the moment. And he was like, oh, it'll be Drag Race. No. He was so, I bet you she's going on Drag Race. 
They just finished filming um, season six of Drag Race UK, and I know some of the cast, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, they just they film every January. So okay. Girl, and you have to be eighteen. So I, I'm eighteen. And I'm eighteen. By Next January. year. Who's Next it? year. Yeah, imagine. We could be so, all over it. <laughs> so, how do you feel? Like, do you, was it easy for you? Like, are were your family supportive from the start, or did you find it quite hard? Like. Because, I mean, I guess when you look at, like, the big, big bad world, you know, I can imagine you've probably had a lot of, have you have you experienced any, like, hate or has everything been quite, quite easy for you? Or, you know, how was all that kind of side of things? I mean, when I first told my mum and dad that I wanted to do drag, like, mm-hmm. obviously they didn't know much about it. So they, they didn't know if, like, anyone that wasn't 18 could do it and all that yeah. stuff. So there was obviously, like, things that, came to their minds but no they were pretty accepting and I'm very glad that I've been given like so much support from my family and stuff I mean I've been performing since I was like literally like three so um, and okay. I mean these were shows beforehand so like then when I started drag like it's I mean it was quite expected that I was going to be doing some sort of something um so yeah I'm very grateful in that term of like having the support from my family but um, I was, like I mean I've definitely had it easier than others. I mean, in school, it's obviously you get like the just the usual shit. Um, but that's never affected me. I've always been someone that like just focused on what I was doing. Like so many people my age would be going out drinking and I'd be coming home filming videos and like doing social media and stuff. So like it just yeah. So you've you kind of always had that kind of character. So do you feel like it it made it easier for you in that aspect? It wasn't just like out the blue, I'm gonna do drag. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I think a lot led up to me starting drag. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but um, if you did your research, you would. No, I'm kidding. Um, so before I started drag, I was in a boy band, so I've like been performing and like doing tours and stuff across the UK. So it's kind of just natural that like, if you get hate on somebody, just ignore it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've I've never really. Of I mean, like obviously, I mean, Paul probably said this actually because I think he said it on my live. But you get like a hundred comments and then like two are negative. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just have to. Yeah. So, and you're always you're always going to get it no matter what you do. I feel like as soon as you start getting a bit of attention. Because the more like the more attention my things have been getting, I've also now started getting hate. But it's like Oh my doesn't... god, congrats for your first hate. I love it. It's actually me. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, it it doesn't bother me either. I mean if you've been through high school, you can deal with some a few comments, mm. eh? You just need to try and shrug it off um so with your family and with your friends that was all fine so do you feel like it's been quite hard in the aspect of like other drag performers perhaps if they maybe look down on you a bit like oh, oh yeah like she's young she doesn't know what she's doing or or one thousand percent like i get it all the time oh there's so many queens that are like in the scene in Glasgow, Edinburgh, and like in the UK and stuff, tweeting about me because I'm performing, and I'm like, "Well, girl, you're only tweeting because you're not doing the gig that I've been booked for." So, sh- sh- do you know what I mean? Jealousy like, there, perhaps. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't really know why they'd be jealous, but well, actually, I do because look at me. <laughs> um, but no, um, yeah, there's a lot of queens. I mean, I think I just try and like focus on what I'm doing. Um, yeah. I mean, sometimes it does make me like it is. It, it, it does feel quite like invalidating. I mean, it's like, it just doesn't make sense though because there's so much like negative negativity around the drag community. So why are you not just being there for others and supporting everyone? Like, of course. I, I always, like, if my friends are doing a show and stuff, I wouldn't be like, oh, they're doing a show. I'd, I'd go support them. Like, that's just what you do. But I mean, obviously some people think differently, so. Yeah, yeah I know. It's a shame. Not everyone's going to think like that, is it? But yeah, I mean, there's plenty of space for everybody. Um, it's a shame that it's like if you feel like that's been quite a big issue for you. So I had to be look on your page and I seen that you're doing stuff with like ITV and stuff as well. Is that, was that, is that to do with drag or was this before then when you were in your band? Well, I've done like, um, so I've been on BBC Scotland quite a lot doing like talks and stuff about drag. And oh. um, I was on ITV News and stuff like that in gay times and all that just doing like talks about like I feel like it's so important to let y- other young people know that it's okay to do drag and like just stuff like that do you know what I mean so I've done a few talks like that mm-hmm. um with my journey and how I started and how I'm gonna go into the world when I turn mm-hmm. 18 and stuff. nice nice one yeah no it definitely is I mean I'm very like 
just let people do what they're doing it doesn't why should it put you up nor down but obviously and this is just me saying from like a perspective of the world basically or specifically maybe not specifically the UK but we live in the UK so let's talk about the freaking UK um <laughs> have you had any like old arrogant giving you yeah. any shit <laughs> I can imagine. Where you're wanting to see, aren't you? Um, no, I get a lot of people, like, a lot of um, people contacting venues that I perform at being like, this is so wrong. It's like child, what do they call it? They call it some word, I don't remember what it's called. But they like, it's really weird. And I'm like, well, if you can have your five-year-old child dancing in a leotard, then why can't I? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, it, it's like when you look back, right, on things, it's like, I feel like the world's just gone mad because people just need to let people live. Like, I feel like obviously there is an aspect of thing of it where um things are being pushed upon children and stuff in certain places or like certain people probably are pushing things on their kids. I don't know if you know about that um guy in America and it was like his daughter, well, his son was like wearing a dress and like dancing about in art or something when she was like two. And now he's like raised her as like a tra like a trans girl or something like that. You know, and she was like from the age of two oh, or something. Oh. And so you're gonna you're gonna obviously have things like that, right? But at the same time, looking back, like when we were young, me and my cousin would put like my brother and um that in dresses and do their makeup and they were be loving it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I've got two younger sisters, so like I was used to playing dressed up from from the get go. Do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. just I've just never stopped. <laughs> it really doesn't define anything about your person. Well, it I think it just makes you a fun person. To be fair, I agree. Girl, why be boring and want to play football when you can dress up and look this good? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. You know exactly. And each to their own. Like everybody has their thing that makes them feel good. And did you feel like it helped your mental how is your mental health i know you've been doing it since you were 14 but obviously even even at that age 12 13 14 and stuff we have we can have struggles with our mental health did you feel like when you started doing drag and obviously it's amazing that your family were so supportive do you feel like you felt free was your mental health better was it shit before um i mean i feel like lockdown really took a toll on my mental health like I'd mm. be going to sleep at, like, fucking five in the morning, waking up at, like, four and not even seeing daylight. Like, I think that really took a toll on me during lockdown. So, obviously, doing drag, um, it was, like, a distraction of, like, everything. Um, mm -hmm. Especially when I was first starting out, I'd be getting in drag, doing makeup every single day. Um, so, that, like, not sleeping at night really, like, took a toll. Um, but, I mean, I, 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 right now, like, I struggle with, like, keeping up this certain standard that I've made for myself and I feel like I have to like live up to all these people on drag race and stuff and like there's so much pressure because I feel like in a way I've kind of got to like be like a leader in a way for like young people and um, so I feel like it's just like keeping up to a certain standard and constantly being active on social media doing like loads of different things like I work so hard on producing an event and then the same night I'm like right what's next do you know what I mean so like mm -hmm. it's, I'm just constantly trying to be doing things just to be like keeping up if that makes sense so I and mean, it can be it can be so tiring oh my god there's so many times where I'm so like mentally drained but I just can't stop like I need to keep going mm -hmm. um yeah, it's quite hard but I mean the things to get through I just like sleep I need to sleep more <laughs> that's, that's oh my god yeah. tell me about it <laughs> so what? bad I'm so sleep deprived all the time. I mean, the bags under my eyes, the literally, even makeup isn't doing the job. If I didn't have the smooth filter on, go on. You'd see <laughs> it's so bad. But I feel like, don't you feel like people don't really appreciate that at all? They look at your social media, they see the parties, they see the gigs, they see you doing what you love. You know, if you go on my page, you'll see like a lot of traveling and a lot of events <laughs> and stuff. And they think it's great, great, great. But behind the scenes, like every other day, I'm like crying because I'm just overwhelmed and tired and like traveling. I mean, like it's so draining, like sitting on a train, for, well, back and forth to London, sitting on a bus, back oh, and forth. Like, my God. A lot, a lot. I mean, yes, people just see it as all oh, you're sitting, but like, girl, it's fucking, it's a lot of work. And then it obviously, like, 
me, people just expect like all they see is the performance. Whereas there's the rehearsals, there's the planning mm -hmm. what I'm gonna stressing over um getting like new costumes and not having to like wear the same thing every time. Like it's so stressful and it's not just what you see on stage, it's like so much. And that's why I, I'm really enjoying the, this camera crew filming me to see the process of what I actually go through through a gig. Yeah. And, you see, and you see my different levels. I feel like I, on social media, obviously I don't really open up and I don't really show like a different side to me where I'm like struggling or anything. Like I just show a fierce drag queen, but I feel like in this, in this thing that we're filming, it's like, you really see a different side to me. I mean, you see quite a, a, a cheeky person. Like I'm quite rude um, <laughs> when I'm stressed. And when I'm under pressure, I get quite, I quite, I get quite rude. But you know what? Yeah, you're self-aware. At least you're self-aware. Yeah, I, I am. I don't mean it in any way. Like I don't mean it in any harm. But like I do get yeah. stressed when people aren't doing what they're meant to be doing on on a show. Then it's, it's yeah, you have to, you have to get them yeah. told. And that's yeah, what I it do. can be, it can be very stressful. And yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same. I've been running some events at the moment, and sometimes when people aren't doing what you need them to do, you're like. <sighs> Yeah. I mean, honestly, from a young age, I've always been like quite quite a manager type vibe. So when I started okay. my events, I started an events company last year and like organizing events. I mean, that's what I just love doing that. I love producing. I mean, I like doing shows that I get booked for, but I love being like the the main person that organizes like who's performing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm yeah. doing one in June. It's not announced yet. It's actually getting announced in two weeks. I'm um, doing one in June called Pride Party in Edinburgh and I've got queens from Drag Race, I've got queens from like England and stuff all coming Amazing. up um, and like obviously having to like organise everything like the travel and like everything and the budgeting it's, it's quite a lot but um, yeah I'll get through it, everything, everything works out I, bet. I think I think they're really really fun actually when you see it all like come together in the end you're like oh yeah it's, I done this I mean, sometimes it's not worth it but most of the time it's, it's like it's really good to just sit back and be like wow I did that yeah I mean, I was pissing myself after the Willy Wonka thing. I was like, that's just showing me, like, you know, I'm fine. I can do events. I know what I'm doing. That would never happen if I was organising it. If that sells tickets, then girl, I'm fine. For exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. Have you um, watched the documentary? Sorry? You watched the new documentary on Channel 4? No. Is there a documentary about it? No. Uh, oh, it's know. coming out. Well, it's just came out. I don't know if you oh. did it so quick. Yeah, that's really quick. I'll need to give that a watch. I'll definitely I'm gonna watch it. I've seen it on TikTok. I'm just not enjoying those wrinkles. I'm get going. I'm going for my first fillers next week. Oh my god, are you nervous? Mm, nah, I'll be fine. It's just my lips and that that I'm getting done in a wee bit here, in a wee bit there. Oh, I love that. That'll be oh. fine. That'll be fine. So, um, obviously, you were saying you like to manage things. I also seen that you are managed is that right by is it red presents well yeah that's like my events company but we've got like obviously someone that does so we, we like sign on queens and when like okay. i can't get when i can't get into clubs like um we send out other queens so we've got like a a roaster whatever you, what is that we call it yeah roaster, yeah word, um with a bunch of queens that we like send out and manage and and help out um but yes i've got the fabulous caitlin who like helps all my bookings and Amazing. organize because like obviously when I'm doing when I'm filming and having to edit a video and like all this stuff like it's just it just gets too much for me um because usually I'm filming a YouTube video and then on the way to the gig I'm half editing the video while like getting it's like chaos so to have someone to help me manage my bookings and like get everything on top of things it's just so much easier um so, Amazing. so that's actually your company yeah yeah so that's my events company that's the one where I like I'm organizing the show right. and stuff. we just did one on the 9th of March called Moi um, and that was sold out and it was literally incredible. Um, Amazing. So you can come to one in June if you're not busy. I'll, I'll get you on again. Yeah, definitely. I'll definitely come along for sure. Come in. It is really fun. Um, it is so much fun. And especially working with one of the headliners that we've got. is like, she's just amazing. Um, so I'm very excited to announce it. So it's going to be fun. I know. I can't wait to see all the lineup and everything. So you feel like there's also, like, obviously we were saying it's quite hard with some of the queens and that, but there's also loads that are nice, accepting. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. 100%. There's hundreds that have taught me and some have took me under the wing and how, how they do stuff. And it's helped, like, with my makeup and stuff. So many queens have given me tips and advice. Um, I mean, there's a queen from Drag Race that's um that just won Drag Race, and they've given me so much advice on like how to like glue my wig down and like just everything. Oh, like amazing! It's so lovely, and everyone like I mean, th there is like the odd few that are like jealous and like that are rude, but I mean, most of it is like so so much like lovely people like helping. That's good. It means a lot. 
yeah no that's amazing that's amazing it's something that I would like to like maybe go to or like actually attend something because like if I'm being completely honest with you it wasn't really my thing like my cousin is very much into drag race she watches it all and like my brother's girlfriend she watches it all and everything and they always chat about it but just it just was never really my thing I never really thought about it much and then um I guess the, it's been more popular over the last few years it's been coming up more and the more that I'm like getting into kind of the entertainment industry shall we say um the more drag queens I'm kind of coming across and you're all you've all been brilliant and I'm just like loving you know getting to know more getting to know more about different types of entertainment that's great yeah, there's definitely, I mean, especially events, like there's a, a drag queen at every, every corner. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm doing an ITV launch party for Loaded in Paris tomorrow in Edinburgh. And like, it's going to be fierce. I, I mean, they always, they love a drag queen at the event. I mean, I think I just spice it up a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of drag. It's definitely become mainstream now because of Drag Race UK. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it's version, but now like in the UK, we've got like RuPaul and Michelle and stuff. Um, So yeah, it's definitely become a lot more mainstream in that sort of, realm yeah totally totally but it's good obviously you said like obviously like it wasn't really something that you were like ever was like oh I'll watch that I think what's good is that that's like something that you like it's so like everything you learn from it it's not just like oh you need to either do drag to do or be a part of like the the LGBTQ plus community like it's just really good to watch and it's so like entertaining like the the Mm -hmm. drama that and like seeing all these cool looks like I think it's just so like good so from an outside perspective I think it's just really like fun to watch yeah exactly I mean like you, you're you so right you don't need to be part of that I mean I'm I'm straight and married and everything and I still can appreciate it for what it is do you know what I mean mm-hmm. but you're always going to have bigots that aren't going to appreciate what you're doing well yeah that's true I mean I haven't really come across that many before. no I mean I, I, well luckily yeah I mean if if I mean, you do get the odd comment, but like, I love it. It's so funny. I love to. <laughs> do you just like fire shit back, or? Yeah. Oh, you should see my Facebook replies. They're amazing. <laughs> it's got a wee cheeky sense of humor to yourself, don't you? It's really fun, and then everyone like chimes in. It's so funny. <laughs> so you're, you're at least you've got like that solid wall that you can stick up for yourself if anything were, you know, to be said. Oh, I just think. I mean. I mean I like I need to start replying now because I mean I get loads of like TikTok comments and I just reply like the company has to reply but it's funny so it's fine do you know what I mean yeah I know I mean you can do it either way you can reply or you can just ignore it I feel like I just ignore them because otherwise I'll just get myself riled like riled up and I'm I don't know at the moment I'm trying to be very like zen and very calm but oh that's my battery going low on my laptop. I better make sure it's still recording. Yeah, I've been having some tech malfunctions in the last few weeks just with storage and everything. It's oh my God, freaking... don't even touch a pain with storage nowadays. Storage. Like... <clears throat> 15 terabytes it's saying that I've used on my iCloud. I'm like, that can't be. <laughs> I don't even know how big that is, to be honest. I'm quite stupid. Um, but yeah, I'm just really... <laughs> I've I've had to I had to go through my emails and like my Google Drive and stuff. Yeah, and, and I was that's like, what to do. It's ridiculous. It's so bad. Um, yeah, no, it's I'm just having a wee look there. Um, so sorry, I've lost my train of thought there. Let me just get back to what we were chatting about. Um, yeah. Nope. So, what what is the kind of next steps for you like with your everything that's going on after you've done finished this filming and obviously you're doing events are you have you got anything else coming up i or... do i am um, i'm actually very excited now i've not i've spoken about like i've dropped hints but i've not like properly spoken about it like on on anywhere um but i'm going to london on wednesday um to record something um to release for pride to perform at all the pride i'm so excited i've always been like i've always wanted like a song to like to like for people to sing along to and stuff um so i'm recording that um in london um next week and i'm so it's gonna be so much fun like Amazing. i've got the outfits ready the wigs ready everything's ready we just need to record the vocals and get the music video done and then and then it's gonna be released at 
I'm, I'm not sure. It's going to be so much fun. Your, so it's your own song? Um, oh. yeah, I'm gonna be- I'm gonna become a musician. My debut single is coming out, and um, <laughs> I'm, I'm planning on dropping it on the first of June. Okay. Um, so that's some insight tea that no one knows yet. So that's- <gasps> exclusively heard here first. Hey. Um. So yeah, I'm so excited. It's gonna be so much fun, and I can't oh, wait. Oh, amazing! So you're going down to London for that. See, that's what we're saying. More traveling again, eh? But it is what it is. Got to do. Got to do what you got to do. Eh? And how is your mental health at the moment? Are you are you doing good? I mean, I mean my sleeping schedule is really bad, but mm-hmm. like, I mean, I mean, I'm getting there. I mean, it's living life, trying, trying to day by day. <laughs> That's what you call it. Um, but no, I'm just like trying to just like get everything. I'm currently doing a drag race review each week, where I've got like queens from the season and um, from like drag race. Um, and my last one, I've just I've just filmed um my last one, my second last one. I've got my la- the finales next week. Um, right. And then, and then I'm gonna be working on something else for YouTube. Like I've always wanted to do YouTube. I've always like loved it. So now I'm so mm-hmm. glad that it's finally growing, and I'm finally getting the attention that I feel like I deserve on YouTube. Oh, totally. But attention spam. Like on TikTok, they're just used to scrolling and they don't watch like proper videos. So mm-hmm. I mean, it's I get back up now, uh, and my views are like skyrocketing on YouTube. So I'm so glad. Amazing. You can you send some of that my way because, but. I uh, to be fair, it's my own fault. I don't put enough time or effort or anything into YouTube. I'm very much like Instagram, and even at the moment, I'm like trying to get myself to be like right, get away from just being like Instagram, 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 and you know my TikTok is going all right, but I'm trying to grow that. And YouTube is where I want people to watch my stuff because that's yeah. where they get to know me the best because it's long videos of you know your life. But I've got like thirty one subscribers. Yeah, I mean, I remember when like my my followers went up so low on YouTube, and I, I was expecting people to just go from TikTok to YouTube, but they didn't. I had to meet in um, like last month uh, with my management, and we were talking about like they were like, oh, maybe you should just stop doing YouTube and just do like the YouTube videos, but shorter on TikTok. And I was like, but I just love like everything about YouTube, like having the intro and then having the main video and like editing funny stuff. Whereas on TikTok, you literally have to be like getting straight into it and you don't really get to like show yourself. You just have to make Mm -hmm. funny videos. And I feel like that's why I'm so glad that my YouTube is now starting to grow because I now get to do vlogs and have people actually watch it and not just get a hundred views. Do you know what I mean? So it just takes time. I feel like, especially for YouTube, I think the only way to get views is just by constantly posting regularly. Um, and that's what I've been doing. I've obviously been posting every Monday. Um, so that's yeah. just like, I need to come every Monday, if that makes sense. Um, okay. So yeah, the constant, constant entity, is that a word? Well, I'm so glad for you because it gives people the chance to see more of your personality, more of like, you know, what's maybe underneath the drag, so to say, <laughs> and really get to know you a bit better. I'm just looking at the top of my screen there our, our meeting's about to cut off in like nine minutes um because i don't have the upgraded version of soon right happens all the time it's such a pain you can always um jump. sorry you broke up there you always jump on another one so it's fine yeah um right what were we saying there sorry i get so easily my mind like gets so easily okay. distracted sorry i did the exact same it's so bad, honestly. Yeah, I would just say, like, posting constantly and having, a, a, like, an exact date and time for people to come. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the key that I learned um, the last few days. <laughs> that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to make sure that I'm, like... Because, see, my... Uh, that's the reason, probably, my storage, because it's literally full, full, full of, like, vlogs and videos. And it's the pain. editing. Yeah, it's such a pain. Like, uh, that's why I have because I have to delete stuff so yeah. it's such a I um, feel like I can't wait to the day that I can just pay someone to just sit and edit everything for like I would I could easily do that but like I, I just feel like I say stuff that I only know can't go in if that makes sense because mm-hmm. I feel like especially when I'm doing my reviews of Drag Race um like if I say something and I don't want people to like take it the wrong way or if I'm like slagging someone's look mm-hmm. and then I'm like said that then only I'll know and I can't be bothered being like oh take that out take that out take that. I'd rather just do it myself um I mean I do yeah. it. like it's so much like oh 
so much effort, isn't it? Especially with like my videos are like twenty minutes long, but it's like nonstop. It's not just like oh, I can. It's like two minutes that I don't have to edit. Like I have to edit every part because it cuts from like my screen to someone else's. So it's just like so right. Much do you do it with like with other people? Yeah, so I have a guest from from Drag Race each time. Nice. Um, I do the reviews on. We do it on Zoom and then. Um. So yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I do feel like there's a lot of. I mean, it's like hard to try and get a guest that's better each week. Okay. Um, so much, so much stress. But I mean, I've done quite well actually. Um. I mean, I've done a full season of Rue Girls, like from people from Drag Race, and like that's amazing. Crazy. If last year, I wouldn't have even thought to have one. Never mind in ten. So it's. Kind of I love crazy. how. I love how things can just start going like. Hey. And do you know so, what? Hey. It's the only way's up. Like, I mean, yeah. unless they get cut, but like, do you know what? Who cares? Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's interesting you say that though, because me and Paul were talking about this as well. Like, when you are speaking about anything, whatever it is, you're always going to have someone that's going to take it the wrong way. So it's very hard, also, to like think like what really needs to be cut out because every, I, I think with everything you say you're going to offend somebody like people yeah. are just so easily offended nowadays as well which is also like you know a thing and we were just kind of ch chatting about like sometimes even if you're like having a joke or taking the piss or like yeah and people can really take it the wrong way so it's that's another thing that's like can be quite hard on your mental health I think like making sure that you're not getting yourself cancelled all the freaking time like it's so hard to keep up with it yeah yeah I suppose that is yeah that's quite true um I mean yeah yeah that's yeah true. or you're just like nah don't give a fuck <laughs> oh, no I agree I think like yeah it's quite hard having the pressures of um making sure you're not saying the wrong thing and just like as, I mean, probably, like, a lot of people feel the need to, like, make sure they're checking, like, Twitter and stuff just to see if people are saying anything. But, like, I mean, I say stuff, and, if, like, especially if it's an opinion on, like, the show, or, like, if I didn't mm -hmm. like someone's, like, I'll stand by it. Um, mm -hmm. but, I mean, in that aspect, I mean, thankfully, people, I mean, even if they take it the wrong way, I mean, what, you liked it and I didn't. What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I know. I, and it's um, like everybody is entitled to their opinion in the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, but true. I mean, you're always going to get somebody that's not going to be happy. Yeah, that is true. Very yeah. annoying. Sorry, I cut you off a bit there. What were you trying to say? I said, "Amen to that." <laughs> preach. Yeah, it's literally preach. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Well. It's been great chatting to you. Is there anything else that you want to touch on just now? I'm not too sure. I mean, obviously, we've had chats about um, what we want to do regarding some stuff in the future together. Mm -hmm. uh, so that'd be fierce. I'm excited to see what, what, what we're going to do. Well, I have something I would like to talk to you about, um, which is actually... Starting. Um... You're starting one. Yeah, I am starting one. Um, I don't know what's happening yet, but I think it's going to be with, do you know Xander Murray? I can't say I do, but I'm going to look him up as soon as we're off this call now. Again, he's the first gay footballer in Scotland. Um, yes, so okay, heard of him. I put him in drag and it, we went on like TV and stuff for it. Um, <laughs> Love it. But, but yeah, so I think we're starting a podcast together. Um, nice. With, you never see like a footballer and a drag queen in the same setting, so it's going to be cool. Um, That'll so be so cool. I don't know what's happening, but I think we're. I, I mean, they're doing it myself with guests or doing it with Xander, so I don't know what's happening. But amazing. Um, so yeah. Cool. Well, we can definitely. I mean, there'll be. We'll do more things together moving forwards. Um, and yeah, like I'm always open to chat about any kind of thing to do with mental health. If you're ever struggling, you can always obviously reach out. Oh and um yeah we can you know we can maybe chat about it in a bit of a deeper I think like obviously that was more of like a general chat and um, which usually seems to be the case that that's happening you know when I'm having a proper chat with people for the first time but um if you would like to then we can certainly do like another one further down the line maybe a bit more specifically about like um your mental health or 
that type of thing. Because I'm doing another one with Paul as well, where we're going to like deep dive it a wee bit more, you know. I love it. But I just think sometimes it's nice to just have a chat, get to know each other a bit better first, and then you know, so everyone feels. Yeah, definitely, I agree. I mean, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, you just like obviously you like grow bonds with people and then just like open up a lot more. Exactly. Um, well, I love to do that. I mean, I probably maybe it's a better idea to do it out of drag, maybe and like mm-hmm. come out my comfort zone or something. I don't know. Yeah, um, I mean, I'd totally be the, I'd totally be up for doing that if you want to take that step and do something outside your comfort zone. That would be really good. No, that'd be fair. So I'd love that. We can. Yeah, and we can do it face to face as well if you want. Yeah. Next time. Yeah, well, I mean, I would have today, but I know, <laughs> just busy. Yeah, chaos, but chaos. Also, a time and we'll get it done. I'm just in Aloha, so it's like yeah, it's not too far. Nah, thirty-five minutes along the road. Yeah, not far. Not far. At all. No. We said it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll let you go for now. Um, I'll get this edited and it'll be up they're meant to be up on Friday but again I'm just you know what I feel like is the issue at the moment I'm trying to do too many things on my own yeah and I I'm just always chasing my tail but I'll try and get that and uh, done as quickly as I can oh well, good so, no Rob thank well, you very for, much thank you very much for having me on I've loved it I've loved chatting with you um, I'm ready been good. next sorry you broke off there <laughs> See what's Sorry. coming next. I'm excited to see what happens next. Me too. Me too. Big things are coming for everybody. I can feel it. Yeah, this is the year. I mean, we say it all the time, but this, 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 this is the year. <laughs> this is the year. This is the year. Um, thanks so much for doing that. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a lovely day. Are you ready to go and take all that off and chill? Or yeah. Yes, I need to edit my video that goes out tomorrow. So. Oh. I've got one to edit tonight as well, so I'm actually just going to, like, cuddle into my bed and do that. So I need to get out of this and take my dog walk, and then see what happens next. You don't walk your dog in drag? No, do I? <laughs> I don't do anything. Can you imagine? <laughs> Sleeping, bless them. Oh, bless. What kind of dog you got? We've got a chihuahua. I've got a cockapoo cavapoo. He's like a mix. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, right. I love you and leave you. Yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Have a lovely night. Thank you very you much. You too. Bye, my love. Bye. Thank you. Bye.